know, but I got him. God, oh, that's two pounder. <laughs> Freaking ch choke that snake, B. Catching crappie from bridges is generally an easy thing to do. Crappie hold on bridges year round, especially deeper bridges. Now this is for several reasons because bridges offer these key things. Cover, shade, and a steady supply of food. It is also a great place to get out of the sun on those hot months like we're dealing with right now in August. There he is. Got it. Another freaking toad. Now, truth being told, the average person can pull up to a bridge, tie up, or anchor out near one of the pillars, drop a few rods out with some minnows at different depths, and have a fair chance of going home with some fish tacos. But to be really productive, you've got to use your trolling motor to move around and figure out the most productive areas on whatever bridge you're trying to fish. Finding bridges on a new body of water can be a shortcut at getting on fish really fast as the learning curve for catching fish on bridge and the time it takes to find fish on bridges if you just use the bare minimum of your electronics can really cut your time on the water in half and get you catching fish extremely fast. Nice one. Now deciding where to start fishing when you first get on a bridge. That's the first step that you've got to take because some bridges can be a quarter mile long, some bridges can be a half mile long, and some are even shorter or longer than that. So this is where your 2D sonar and your side scan is going to come in, but you don't necessarily need that. You're just going to have to fish a lot more pillars and thoroughly uh, fish these pillars to be able to locate what depth and what area on the pillars that the fish are holding. <clears throat> now taking the time to scan around each pillar to find a big group of fish will really shorten the time spent looking and more time catching. The first place I always check when fishing bridges is I look for shade. After the sun comes up, the bridge will cast a shadow onto the water and 90% of the time, if the fish is there, they will be somewhere around or in the shadow that the bridge is casting. Fish feel safe when they're in the shade. They're able to get up against the vertical structures that bridges offer and it makes them feel safe. And also the shade is just a, a tad bit cooler now when looking around with your 2D or your side scan, try to find groups of bait fish. Look for shad or minnows hitting the surface of the water. There might not be any crappy on your electronics, but something will be feeding on these bait fish that might be moving in and out of the area, and you might just miss it when you're idling around looking for them. The best way to target these fish that I have found is with a 6-6 ACC crappy stick or their new 7-1-1 piece. Now I pair that up with four pound test high vis line, a crappy man jigs, a little minnow in the crappy man green color, and a 164 ounce jig head so I can stay in that strike zone as long as possible. Using these setups, you can pitch around and cover water fast, making a few casts at different angles on each pillar, changing the depth on each cast until you finally get your first bite. Now once you receive your first bite or you feel like you've got a bite, doubling down and repeating that cast a couple more times at the same depth, the same rate of fall, or the same way you were winding your jig in will really, really, really up your chances at getting another bite. Now once you have caught a few fish or had a bite or two on a, a one pillar on the bridge, Sometimes if that pillar is the same depth on other parts of that bridge, you can repeat that process and normally the school will be almost exactly the same spot, the same depth, the same everything on each pillar. It's kind of like 
you know, finding the pattern, so to say, on that bridge. Trolling can be an effective way to catch fish off bridges. Just throwing out four rods out front, weighted down with a split shot and a minnow, and using your trolling motor to control where the baits go and how close to the pillars they get can really help you stay in that strike zone. Have each rod at a different depth, even if it's just half a foot higher or half a foot deeper than the other rod. And once you get a bite or two, you can change the other rods to the same depth and really start catching them. Bridges are like highways for bait fish and the seasonal movement of all fish. Bridges connect either a river channel or a creek channel to the back of something or just somewhere where the fish has to go through during a part of its life. This is why there's always some kind of bait fish and there's always fish around bridges as they're moving from point A to point B and then back to point A. The deeper the bridge, the better the fish. This is a year round technique that you can catch fish on any given day as long as your thermocline will let you. Your thermocline plays a big part if you're fishing a really, really deep bridge because they're not gonna be below where there's no oxygen. Now, during the fall and spring, shallower bridges will hold some of the biggest fish of your life. So do not discredit a shallow bridge. Now, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. And if you want to see me fishing a bridge, check out this video right here.